Okay, so I'm a big fan of the Battle Network series. I've pretty much played them all, except for Star Force, for obvious reasons. Well, I haven't played them all to the end, but at least I've been playing them. At this point, I think I have some kind of disorder when it comes to these Mega Man games. What I'll usually do is get the craving to play some sweet, sweet high-speed tactical grid-based combat, right? So I'll often pop in Battle Network 2, because that's the one I'm most familiar with. Or, or was it 3? Uh, these games always kind of blend together, never mind. The important part is I'll start somewhere in the middle of the series. The problem then is that I'll go, hey, wait a second, didn't something special that was really important to the story happen in the previous games? And then, like the plebeian I am, I will not go and look it up on the internet. Rather, I will play the first games all over again. Often, this will lead to me getting extremely bored of all the random encounters, the less than interesting areas that are especially present in the first game, and the awful story progression. Like, fucking, why do I have to literally traverse half the internet just to deliver some stupid note and then take an hour's worth of train rides just to talk to some random NPC? God, I hate these games! And so, I stop. I've probably fallen asleep more times when playing a Battle Network game than any other game, yet I still keep coming back. Why? Well, a thorough analysis of the Battle Network series will have to come at a later date. So for now, let's just say that, for the most part, the combat system is what captures my interest. Imagine then what happens when I suddenly see an announcement trailer for a game where this is the only focus. One Step from Eden is developed and designed by one guy, Thomas Moon Kang, with some help in the music and art department by other obviously exceptional people. This is a Kickstarter game, and I'm actually super pissed that I didn't know about this until I was too late, because I'd love to be able to help this game come to fruition. Well, it's not like it was needed or anything though. I'd say the campaign was a roaring success with a total funding of over 450% above the original goal. Those extra five grand though. Oh, how I long for these animated cutscenes. The main driving force behind this enormous support was obviously the gameplay, so how does it stack up? Well, it's fucking awesome. I can't help but draw parallels to the Battle Network series here. Hell, the creator even openly states Mega Man as one of the biggest inspirations. And, well, that, that's kinda obvious, isn't it? But just being inspired by something doesn't make it good. Just look at, uh, oh, oh god. What? Oh shit! So, as you can see, I've already fallen in the trap of a Mega Man Kickstarter once before. Uh, with One Step from Eden though, things felt a bit different. Of course, that's really easy to say now that the game is out, and it's good. But to begin with, the game was actually going to be released no matter what the result of the funding was. Uh, so, what they basically did was use the crowdsource platform as a way to gain funds to add different extra stuff to the game. Like, for example, the Switch port. I really do feel like this is the best way to do stuff like this on a platform such as Kickstarter. Of course, there are never any real guarantees that the product you're supporting is going to turn out good or even going to come out at all. But Thomas Moon Kang did a really good job of convincing people that this was going to be great. I mean, if you take a look down the uh, the website here, you can see like all these different uh, animations and stuff. All ex all these examples. It, this is not just this is not just art. This is not just character art, concept art. This is the actual game in motion. So doing it like this. Yeah, I can see why people would support it. So while Mighty Number no. 9 really disappointed people's expectations, One Step From Eden, at least in my case, really didn't. No, but honestly, this isn't just exactly what I wanted, it's what I needed. 
Screw the random encounters. Screw the long winded fetch quests. Screw the fucking. What the hell even. Ah! One Step from Eden is a high quality cut of the Mega Man Battle Network combat system with all but the essential fat trimmed and a pinch of extra seasoning which has all been cooked to near perfection and I've been starving for years. This game does not waste any time getting you into the action. To start out you only have access to one character but you unlock more as you play. I'm not completely sure how exactly you unlock them, the only one I'm certain of is the shopkeeper who you have to defeat in battle to unlock. Which is like 100 times easier said than done. But the other ones, uh, I don't know, it seems like they just popped up randomly for me. That's kind of a problem this game has, there's a lot of stuff that's not properly explained, like how the spell Frost Barrage shoots two shots in one row when used from the bottom or top row. Or that skipping an upgrade for a spell will use the upgrade token but not heighten the requirement for the next try. For spells this is kind of fixed with a preview button which shows what happens when the spell is used but most of the time this doesn't show the optimal use for the spell and once it even crashed my game because it killed the preview character. I am a bit hesitant to highlight these flaws though. Mainly because I know there are updates being worked on pretty much all the time to fix most of the gripes I have. I think the core of the problem is that the developer is under the presumption that people will figure it out with enough tries or that a lot of the stuff is really self-explanatory. And I guess that is, well, right, but it doesn't make it any less annoying when stuff doesn't work like you think it will. Then again, it is just one guy and as far as I've seen he's super willing to listen to criticism so I'm willing to give him a free pass on this. I mean, the grid combat is really intuitive. You don't have to have played Battle Network to instantly grasp how this is going to work. You cast the spells that are in your slots with the A and B button. Oh, and yeah, I'm playing this on the Switch by the way. But this can be changed to your liking. Personally, I kept the default configuration. I feel like it's pretty good, actually, but it's always nice to have options. Whenever you start a new run, you're instantly thrown into battle, but once you conquer that encounter, you're given the choice of three different pathways. This is probably what you'll want to pay most attention to during your first few playthroughs, because you do not want to go into a hazard or miniboss area unprepared. This game is hard. It's ruthless and it's unforgiving. It's not too bad at first, the first area never throws more than two enemies at a time at you, but later on things can get really hectic. The worst parts are when you're attacked by four new enemies at once, which you have no idea how to deal with. But since everything comes at you at the same time, you never really get a chance to observe the different attack patterns. This more often than not leads to the player, me, getting massively overwhelmed and killed without even knowing what happened. Infuriating as it is though, that's part of the game and coming back later and totally acing that same setup feels so incredibly satisfying. For what it's worth, when you eventually do die, it almost always feels like it's because you weren't good enough, especially in regards to the bosses. Though it might not seem that way, I don't have any problems with the difficulty. Not really. This is a roguelite, after all. Whenever you die, you're basically back to square one, except for the stuff that you unlock by gaining levels along the way. This is all added to the pool of possible spells and artifacts that can appear in the run. In some ways this really reminds me of The Binding of Isaac, another game I've played way too much of. Although I'd say it's not as luck based as that game, sure luck is still a big factor, in fact it's basically what determines the difficulty of the game, but I'm a firm believer that you make your own luck. Don't feel like you have what it takes to challenge the harder paths? Go for the easy route. Is there a specific boss you have trouble with? Go for the mountain biomes and defeat Terra as soon as possible because she fucking sucks to fight against in the later areas. There's a certain amount of choice here to help you negate the worst. You also always start off with some, I'd say, really good spells which could theoretically take you all the way to the end if you're good enough at remembering the enemies' attack patterns. You're constantly fed new spells throughout the game too, which you can choose to take with you or just not. I'd say the most important thing is finding a combination of spells that works the best for you. There's a lot of synergy between spells and artifacts to take advantage of here, and to help with that you can set a spell focus. 
This will increase the odds of a spell within that group appearing as a reward. I don't see how choosing Phalanx is ever a bad thing, so I usually go with that and whatever I want to aim for. Some characters already have one of their focuses set. This is probably to help with figuring out how to best take advantage of their setup, I guess. Like Riva, who starts out with the Phalanx focus as a default. This system can be surprisingly deep and pretty much changes on the fly based on which artifacts you find or which character you play as. There's a surprising amount of variety here, actually. The characters are all very unique in their playstyle, though I think my favorite so far has to be Riva. It's almost stupid how fun it is to perfectly time a counter shield against an attack that's about to hit you. There are also ways to break the system. Like, for example, by infinitely spamming Rock Cycle. I'm not gonna lie. This tactic is what got me through a lot of the game early on. Especially those areas where they just dump a ton of enemies on you. I know for a fact that this has been patched out of the PC version by now, and I'm not sure I completely agree with that decision. I felt like a freaking genius when I realized that you could upgrade the spell to give you back half the mana cost and 10 shield for every use. Combine this with the artifact that gives you half a mana whenever flow cast is triggered, and you're damn near invincible as long as you can get set up correctly. Here lies the problem I have with the nerf though. It really does take some luck and skill to get to that point. And not only do you need enough money to buy upgrades for it, but you also have to get lucky enough to get the right combinations of upgrades and artifacts. Oftentimes, I wouldn't get a complete setup until the penultimate area, and you're not really guaranteed to get it then either. When you do though, it feels really good. It's definitely not something I'll do every time I play. I think part of the fun is coming up with other strategies, and of course getting good enough at reading the enemies so that I don't get hit at all. At its core, I think that's what I like most about One Step From Eden. It's really skill expressive and gives you the freedom to try out whatever you want, and if you're quick enough on your feet, almost anything can be used to take down your foes. There are some spells that I don't quite understand why are even there, but that just makes me want to experiment even more. Even though I've already played for about 30 hours, I wouldn't consider myself good by any stretch. And it honestly feels like I've barely started to scratch the surface of the enjoyment I'll get out of this game. If this little video piqued your interest, because let's be honest, that's the whole reason I made this, One Step From Eden is available from Steam or the Nintendo eShop. If you're not quite sure if you want to commit yet, there's also a free demo available too, which I'll link in the description. Please, please give this game a chance. Well, that, that's it for now, I guess. I spent pretty much my entire Easter cycling between Animal Crossing and One Step From Eden, and even though I probably won't reach a lot of people with this, I just really wanted to make a video about this game. I know I was super surprised when I saw this show up in my recommendations, so if I can tip off just one more person about the existence of this gem, then it's all been worth it. Next time we're gonna go a bit more, uh, three-dimensional.